Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am in Derbyshire today and the aim is to photograph some little grebes. So I found a nesting pair of little grebes at this location a few weeks ago. I was here scouting this place out as a, as a possible water vole location. Um, no water voles, but the little grebes here seem to be the most obliging little grebes I've ever come across. Usually my experience with, with little grebes is they take one look at you and then dash underwater and they pop up tens of meters away from you and then that's how it goes. But yeah, I saw a nesting pair, so I thought, why don't I bring you guys along and we'll, we'll see how they're getting on now. It's about a 20 minute walk to, to the location. So if I see anything of note along the way, I'll be sure to let you know. Right, well, I'm at the location and the little grebes have, have moved their nest site. They were, if you can see behind me, the sort of reeds that are in the water. They were there and I was thinking, God, the nest must have failed. And then I was just looking very close, very close to the path and I think can show you on my GoPro just where the nest is now. Can you see down there? I'll take some proper video but I don't want to I really don't want to disturb them but I'll show you with my uh, with my proper camera. Right I've positioned myself about 20 meters away from the nest. Um, I'll show you what I'm looking at. So I think it's the female that's on the nest and the male seems to be out feeding. So I've positioned myself looking up, up river or up canal I should say. Now the trick with pretty much all wildlife photography is to try and get as close to eye level as possible. If you buy the water's edge, that essentially means getting the camera as low to the water as possible, just for the purposes of getting a bit of video. I, uh, I'm not as low as I could be, but I'm gonna try and get some video and then work on some photography afterwards. Hopefully, the little grebe reappears, and uh, yeah, I can show you, show you some footage. One of the things I'm having to contend with here is the weather is pretty dark and grey, uh, which means I've got two options really. 
either push up the ISO or reduce the shutter speed. When the little greaves are out in the open, I can get away with 1 500th, 1 640th of a, of a second for the shutter speed, which is fine. But when it gets into the darker areas, I'm having to, to hit a lower shutter speed there. One of the tips I've got for that is put your camera on as high a burst as possible and just take as many shots as possible because you'll look back through your photos and yes, there might be motion blur in quite a lot of them, but there will at least be one or two from that burst that will be in focus, no motion blur. So yeah, I guess the tip is just take as many photos as you possibly can because there'll always be a few that you're happy with. Of these little birds they are constantly on the move constantly diving underwater constantly coming back up with something it's uh, yeah like I think I said previously I've never had much luck with little grebes even when I lived in London like most birds are, are pretty used to human presence in London but I'd always have it that as soon as they pretty much saw anyone they'd dive on dive underwater or stay right in the middle of of a lake or something and you couldn't really get close but here they just seem just completely not bothered at all. Yeah, I showed you where they're nesting. Hopefully that's okay. My only worry here is there's quite a lot of dog walkers that come along. But um, yeah, fingers crossed. I'll, uh, I'll definitely be back in this location to see if they have any little chicks. But for now, one of them's happily on the nest. The other one's happily out feeding. I'll, uh, I'll continue to get some more footage. Well, the sun's just come out and I've just seen my first black cap of the year. So that is very nice to see. I think I might have got about two seconds of footage and it might be horrifically exposed because I wasn't, wasn't planning to, uh, to photograph or video one today. So when you're working by a canal or a river, there is potentially gonna be a few complications. Um, the main one that I'm having to deal with at the moment is shooting through these reeds um, because I want to be as close to the water's edge as possible but that has meant that I am shooting through 
reads. So whilst it could be seen as a problem, I'm trying to use it as an advantage as if I can find a clearing where I'm gonna wait for the subject to come through in that clearing, I can use the reeds as a bit of foreground blur because uh, obviously they're not going to be in focus because I'm focus focusing on the little grebes but it can just add a little bit of interest into what could be just a bit of a plain portrait shot and then the second thing that I'm having to contend with is because this is quite a still body of water everything is reflected quite well and whilst reflections are always fun uh, when your subject is reflected it does mean that I'm having to be careful with the background that I'm trying to get into it because if it's a particularly messy background that is being reflected down it can have a completely different feel to the photo so if I've managed to take quite a few different photos with different backgrounds I'll show you some of them now and then you can let me know what you think some of them you could class as being quite creative and quite arty or you could have a different point of view and think, well, it just looks messy and it takes away from the subject. Let me know your thoughts. I'll put on quite a few now. So yeah, I guess to summarise what I'm trying to put across in this video is when you've got a nest site for birds, or it could be anything really, it's a lot easier to second guess A, where that subject's going to be, and B, what they're going to be doing. So for you, you can position yourself in certain places where you've seen the, the birds go. Um, get ready for that one shot that you're waiting for and it also gives you a chance to experiment with loads of different things like I've been talking about reflections on the water using foreground or background blur you can even experiment with lighting you'll know if you position yourself in one place you can get backlit images or you can get front lit images or even side lit images um, in somewhere like this it essentially means that if the sun was shining there are only certain places that the sun would be hitting the water so you can work with just getting the bird illuminated when everything else is dark around there's what i'm trying to say here is there's a myriad options of what you can do and spring is the perfect time to do it because you've got a reliable location and you've got as good a chance as possible of knowing where the birds are going to be and what they're going to be doing so yes i'm going to stick around and try and get a bit more footage for pieces to camera i think this is going to be it so thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one cheers